everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another podcast interview today. We're going to have a great conversation about modern retailing on the show. I have a new Robert. She's the Senior Director of Product Marketing at CDK Global Modern Retail. A new welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Brian. I'm excited to, to be with you and talk a little bit about modern retail today. Yeah, you know, we've seen um, tremendous acceleration and dealer awareness that the online and in-store process needs to be unified. Uh, Roadster was really a pioneer in um, kind of taking away the customer experience uh, away from the dealer that may just be uh, a random assort- assortment of colors and CTA buttons and pop-ups and say, look, let's just make it really simple. And when they come in the store, let's have that same experience, which you know I've referred to as connected retailing. But the overall customer experience falls into this modern retailing conversation. So let's Let's start with an update. You know, digital retailing is the piece which a lot of focus has been on in the past, which was the ability to have penny perfect payments online and pick up in the store with the same tools, the same numbers. Where are we today from a CDK perspective in that seamless connection of online and in store? Yeah. So, I mean, the the great news is there is a lot of, you know, dealers have adopted um, a digital retailing tool. We did a survey and found that about 84% of dealers are using a digital retail tool, which is great. And certainly um, the pandemic really accelerated that as we all saw. And um, and so I think everyone agreed a consensus was that, yes, this is a a necessary um, tool that we are going to have to utilize and become offer the experience to consumers in the way that they want to be able to start their 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 purchase essentially. So that's the good news is is it's it's pretty widely adopted. I would question and would love to talk to the dealers, the six the 16 percent of dealers that have yet to adopt it. <laughs> I think what are you what are you doing? Um, but 84 percent have adopted. So there is there is widespread adoption there. The unfortunate news, and there's a lot of room for opportunity here, is only 30% of dealers are actually leveraging their digital retailing and bringing it into the showroom mm. to incorporate yeah. it into you know, their, the, the, the experience. And so what we're finding is that disjointedness is creating, that's a, that's a big friction point that is creating duplication of efforts that imagine the surprise and frustration that a consumer and they've they spent time on on online they've started their deal they're excited they've started um penciling out desking their deal and then they they're ready to come into the dealership they sit down and if they're not presented with that continuous experience then essentially that process starts all over and so there right. there could be frustration and um just pain around hey i did all of this work where is it yeah. It? And so there, there's a lot of opportunities still in this space to just continue that on. And, and again, the, the, there obviously the opportunity to just engage it in the process, but this is, this is a tool that they've already invested in. And so leveraging and getting the maximum utilization out of this tool to provide that experience is, is just a, a really a number one thing that I would uh, would recommend for dealers to really take advantage of today. You know, Anu, I, I want to give you some insights from some recent work that I'm doing with dealer groups that have given their GMs choice whether or not to promote or elevate or put in the first position their digital retailing. And there, there's a couple things. I think the last two years have been kind of adversarial to modern retailing. With inventory supply so constrained, dealers charging full MSRP or over MSRP, there was a lot of incentive not to put any transparency on the web. Mm -hmm. And I think we took a little sidestep or backstep, depending on who you talk to, 
with this idea that the MSRP plus pricing was an excuse to, you know, go back to old uh, sales process. But even now, there are dealers who are moving back in. We're seeing discounting uh, come back, but they're not disclosing the addendums, those, you know, bolted on uh, accessories. And again, it's this, well, why are you not disclosing that? Well, you know, we don't want to cut down on our lead flow. And I'm like, yeah, but at the end, you're, the customer's getting kind of shocked that you added $2,000 of addendum. Wow, but then we wouldn't get leads. So I think part of our problem is that we're so focused on leads, we're not focused on the customer experience. And I'm not sure how we break through that because just this month, that's all I saw on an audit of a multi-store group that it was all about leads. It was less about serving the customer's needs in real time. Mm -hmm. And we see that as well. We have, I have lots of those conversations with some of our dealers. And interestingly enough, the, one of the questions that we asked dealers in our, one of our surveys was what their strategies were, what their focus areas were for 2023. And the number one by far, nearly 80% said improving customer experience. So it's interesting. It's they're saying that that's the customer experience and they want to do this, but there is a slight disconnect in what you're talking about in also extending that experience through through the trust and transparency. And we have found time and time again that trust and transparency are are the top things that really help create that customer experience that they want to. And you know, by capturing and connecting all of that information, you're showing that the consumer that, hey, we are giving you this transfer. There are no surprises, elevating that customer experience. Now you, you're, you're trusting what we're telling you, what we're showing you. It's the same when you come in. And by doing that, you know, you're, you're twofold. Obviously, you're addressing this really great customer experience that you want to be able to deliver. And, and that's a really way, a good way to make a great impact on it. But it's also... Yeah. Um, moving that customer through the sale a lot quicker. So there's there's sort of the the domino effect. Um, and you mentioned the the lead capture, you know, they're using it as a lead capture and not really as a, a a true process moving them through the transaction process. And interestingly enough, according to um, NADA, when dealers use their digital retail tool all the way through in the showroom, as part of their presentation and desking, their per unit sales actually goes up from 10.8 on average monthly per sales per per salesperson to 16 units. Mm. So there's real tangible ROI in addition to, I mean, that just shows that customer experience is pulling through to give them a bump in, in unit sales per month. Yeah. And, and I will say that at a high level, I think the focus on the customer experience is the top priority from some of the more progressive dealer groups I consult with. And it's going to come in two ways. It will be the personalization of the shopping experience, which would fall into the CDK Sales Express conversation, which we'll have to today, which is the seamless journey from online to in the store to post sale mm -hmm. through a unified set of tools where duplication of effort is eliminated. And then secondly, the management of first party data to make that customer ownership life cycle more mm -hmm. personalized, more relevant. And that's why I want to bring you in to talk about this roadmap, because let me just say, I understand the addiction to leads, because it's been the only way in which, well, performance of websites have been measured and the performance of marketing have been measured. No one was measuring throughput, efficiency, customer experience. So I get it's hard to get off the lead count drug. But if we want to look out for the next year, your vision at CDK Global for modern retail, what other well, improvements mm -hmm. would you see as dealers use um, Roadster, 
he leads and the DMS, three primary building blocks for the customer sales experience. What's on the roadmap to make that connectivity even more powerful to increase the throughput of their sales team? Yeah. Well, I think before I, I touch on on our product, which I, I would love to, to, to talk about, the Sales Express, as you mentioned, but I really want to touch on the fact that it's the mindset of shifting over to modern retail. And as we as we talked about, a lot of dealers are still thinking just in, in the digital retailing space. And it's really about the entire customer journey, first and foremost, um, and not just that initial, you know, digital retail, ex, you know, uh, experience just on the online. It's all the points along the process. And so it's this mind shift to modern retailing. And when I when I say modern retail, it's just essentially enabling your consumers to buy in whatever way they're comfortable. So they start, you know, obviously a lot of them are starting online. But the back and forth, hey, maybe I want to finish a a particular aspect of the process of my buying journey, the transaction process online or in store, whatever they're comfortable with. And that's really the shift in in the mindset of saying, hey, it's not just digital retail. This is all connected. It is modern retail. And so to really, in order to modernize that car buying experience, we just need to make it easier to transact. Um, we need to make it easier, have the flexibility, as I mentioned, for consumers to to purchase and then dealers to be able to sell the way they want. Um, and then thinking about from a dealer's perspective is how are you connecting those consumers to that experience? You know, and then on the dealership side, figuring out ways of how can we drive efficiencies and productivities for for the sales staff or not just the, the, everyone that touches that process along the way. So it's a twofold, approach because the the name of the game, what we found is in order to increase that customer experience, we need to ultimately shave time off the clock, right? And complete deals faster. So it's a combination of having the right process and the right technology in order to streamline that entire sales process, sales transaction to provide that overall modern retailing experiences that customers are experiencing everywhere else in, in our everyday lives and and it's it clearly what they what they want and so really helping to do just that is you know to to modernize that and make it easier for both consumers and dealers our team at CDK has really been heads down hyper focused on developing really a truly more unified experience for both sides for the consumer as well as the dealer and so our strategy is is to bring all of those steps into a single workflow. So we, we, what we mentioned before, what you mentioned before, which is, hey, it's it's the online digital retail, but it's also you know all the things that happen in desking, the trade evaluation, and credit, and F and I, and and you know through the deal jacket, through the signing process, and you know ultimately getting everything all signed in the contract. So all of those touch points, all of that process is how can we look to bring all those steps into a single workflow, you know, unifying the data, unifying the workflows, um, making it a common experience platform for both the consumers and the dealer side. So for the dealers, it's just, it simplifies that selling into a single experience so you have everything you need in one place to drive that sale. It's easy to utilize. It's easy to teach. So you're really touching on those efficiencies and productivity standpoints. And for the shopper, it's easy for them as well, because now you're offering that truly omni-channel experience with that flexibility that they want to go online and in the showroom or however they want to do it, right? A, a, probably a, a hybrid of both. And so it gives dealers the ability to cut out a lot of that wasted time and to complete that deal much faster, ultimately giving them the the customers that experience, you know, that great experience making making for happy customers uh, who are then more likely to ultimately recommend their experience to friends and family and get that MPS scores up. Great, great. You know, one of the, you know, I guess you might call it the holy grail of (laughs) automotive (laughs) is trying to create that single sign-on to a multi-step retail process that generates um, 
the experience that you're talking about, one of the roadblocks has kind of been F and I. It's been a well, let's just say a very isolated step in the process, limited to very few people in the dealership. Yet, in recent years, we've seen modern retailing frameworks where the salespeople are presenting and closing the F and I piece themselves. We've seen disclosing F and I online in the showroom. So by the time they get into the F and I office, it's not a big surprise. We've seen different models. What insights have you seen that can help dealers better understand how they can seamlessly integrate F and I products? Uh, and still, if they want to have a you know standalone F and I department, they can. But by reducing friction, what mm -hmm. insights from your recent customer survey on friction points in the sales process can give us some insight on what's happening? Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, we did our friction point study and we really took a look at, we we just wanted to understand essentially the the good and the bad in, in that buying process. And so one of the things that we uncovered, and by the way, we did that study in conjunction with NADA, um, specifically the NADA Academy, and we captured at both the consumer side as well as the dealers. I think we had over about 1,100 consumers and about 335 dealers participate. So we got a wide spectrum, lots of different age groups in there. And we really wanted to look at, hey, what are the pain points um, from the consumer side that, the, the, that they've identified? And the top pain points, um, F&I was in the top there. The first was um, waiting for the negotiation process, essentially, was the, the biggest friction point. And then very closely then followed by waiting on F&I. And so F&I is really an area where dealers can take a look at. I mean, if you don't know where those points are, you may not be really focusing and you may not even understand where you need to change. And so what we also did is we took a look at that you know, impact of time and those delays on the shopper. And of course, the longer it takes, as you as everyone can guess here, is the longer it takes, well, guess what? The, the MPS score goes down, the customer experience, their satisfaction goes down. But F and I is an interesting one because what we what we found is that if the customer is waiting longer than 30 minutes in F and I, their MPS score dropped nearly in half. And shockingly, nearly 60% of customers said they actually did wait more than 30 minutes. So being able to um, give the consumers uh, the, like present the menu earlier in the deal, right? Those are things that can shorten their, their time in F&I. So there's a lot of things I think that dealers can look at in the F&I area. Another, another is utilizing the tools. Again, going back, a lot of the digital retailing tools have um, control measures in place. You know, I hear from dealers that, well, you know, it's we want to be able to, to control that process because we want to make sure that we have, you know, the profitability goals that we need to, to hit. And so a lot of that technology gives you, offers you that control. So you're not just using that, um, you know, that's not the bottleneck. In other words, you're you're able to bring that in, that F&I process in earlier in the sale to re really ultimately reduce that friction point. But at the same time, giving uh, both sides, right? Giving consumers that, that transparency so that they understand what to expect. And uh, any, I believe it was an NADA survey also study this from the perspective of if you introduce the menu options earlier, actually the throughput of what they end up going with is actually a little bit greater. So gives them the expectation of what they want so they can get through the process faster. And then from the dealer's perspective is you're allowing, um, removing that friction so that the customer's not sitting there waiting and not affecting, dramatically affecting that those MPS scores. And that MPS score is essentially just their likelihood to recommend the dealership. And that is probably one of the most powerful ways a business can really promote themselves is through the that that referral of friends and family. Amen to that. You know, Anu, when I'm listening to you and I'm saying, well, CDK has spent the time to identify the pain points, has the tools to deliver a modern retail experience. 
dealers who are listening say, like, yeah, yeah, I, I hear, hold on. You know, I knew you told me uh, 11 units to 16 units. Oh, I'd like that for all my salespeople. And I will add my own uh, stats that um, from some of the work that I've seen, about a 30% increase in in-store close rates because of um, uh, significant improvement in trust. You know, same number, same interface, same look online and in the store. No surprises. Um, saving time and uh, a more engaged customer in the selection of F and I product. All those things. Thirty percent increase of close rates when someone comes into the dealership. So I step back and I talk to dealers, and here's what it comes down to. Um, I don't really know how to make that change. Like I don't, all I know is what's working and I'm afraid to change because if I'm afraid, uh, if I miss my numbers, I could lose my job. I mean, from a very practical you know, standpoint, fear of change and compensation models uh, are holding back some people. Can we talk a little bit about when a dealer embraces CDK for a modern retail experience. Does that come with people that come into the store and help with that transformation? Because, you know, I'm not sure that some of the holdouts are not because they don't want to, is they just so they can't do it alone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think one of the 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 ways is having a really strong technology partner. Um at, you know, at CDK, we, we, that's exactly what we help cus or our dealers do during the onboarding process is really take a look at their process and give them best practice guidelines and show them, hey, here are the steps that are going to make you successful. But it is going to be a, a change. Um, a lot of times it's a change of culture, as you mentioned. And, and that is, we all know, that's probably one of the most difficult things. Technology is easy <laughs> in some respects. <laughs> Technology is easy. And so it's, it takes that. Yes that three prong approach, you know, that people process and tools that we always, we always hear about. And, and that's so true because to really take advantage and, and that um, the statistic that I mentioned before, where 84% is adopted it, but only 30% is utilizing it. That's because of process. Mm. And so having a, a technology partner, I think is, is a really great way that a dealer can really help um, take a look at their process, see from a best practice, hey, here's what we see successful dealers do. This is what's working. Here's the ROI and the benefit um, that you can you can see when these changes take place. Because you're right, changes, it, it's a change is scary for everybody. Change is hard or just natural for, for us in our, our daily work. We we tend to have comfort in what we know. And, and so that is difficult, but it's going to take buy-in um, really at all levels to do it. But you know, we're going to be right there along with, along them, um, helping them along the way. You know, as we look at modern retail and some of the unknowns in the future, um, one of the wild cards is how OEMs handle the tools that dealers want to use to create the modern retail experience. And this is not a political conversation, but some OEMs have chosen a single platform. Uh, others uh, like you're in the Hyundai uh, program and you're you're one of, I think, three choices. Uh, dealers typically like choice. and But I also understand the OEM's desire to have a seamless experience on, you know, tier one, tier two, tier three. You know, how, how do we work up a compromise? Uh, I know that CDK has a, a very robust API structure to allow integrations with different technology partners. So your openness helps with dealer choice. But what about the bigger issue of uh, dealers and dealer groups that are fearful? Like, well, do I have to support four different, five different mm -hmm. retailing experience? Like, right. you know, how do I create a local brand if the shopping tools are very different. And any thoughts about that? Yeah, you know, I think you know we're we're hearing it um, from from really both sides, and and we we that's that's part of the reason why we're working so hard in trying to s streamline the experience so that it is. It, I mean, because at the end of the day, you're exactly right. The OEMs want a great experience for 
for their to shoppers. It's exactly what the dealers want. They both want the same thing. And it's what we want from a tech, you know, from, from our side as a technology partners, we want to be able to enable that. And so it's taking a look at, Hey, how can we just what you said, which is, you know, having multiple systems and operations and experiences, ultimately experiences is not good because at the end of the day, the consumer is the one that suffers that. So really taking a look at, you know, leveraging the technology in the best way that will benefit the, ultimately the consumer, because that's that's what's going to be driving driving that experience. And so we are keenly, you know, tr- you know, working working on p- providing that level of experience so that both from the dealership perspective that they can take advantage of. And I think it alleviates because really the OEMs just want that great experience. And so if if that provides the great experience, that alleviates their concern as well to maintain that level of, hey, we have our brand, we want this brand experience to exist. And so really getting to the root of, well, what does that look like? And you know how can we provide that level of experience that everyone wants? So I think just that, which is taking a look across the board, you know, leveraging the technology in a way that is going to meet ultimately from a dealer's perspective, really collapsing all of that down into that single experience across those different brands. Um, and then also, you know, providing that experience that the OEMs want as well. So it's not an easy one, but I think ultimately every every single player is wanting the same end goal. So it's kind of keeping an eye on that ball for the consumer's sake, what's going to be best for the consumer at the end of the day. That's great to hear. You know, and, and one of the trends I mentioned at the high level, which mm-hmm. is the theme of improving the customer experience, part of that then is then post-sale, uh, building customer loyalty, sending proper messaging out to the customer, and my recent research report on CDPs, talking to the point that more and more dealer groups are focused on what we've been talking about, the shopping experience, the unification of the sales process, and then investing in customer data platforms to make sure their communication post-sale and through recall and service and everything is really accurate. One of the strengths of CDK has been your Fortellus platform, which was a breakthrough a number of years ago, but um, it uh, doubling down on expanding the functionality. Uh, you have APIs for eLeads, you have APIs for uh, the DMS, you have APIs for Roadster, um, which is going to allow dealers who want to have a more personalized um, follow-up and ownership experience, great flexibility to get to the data that they need to create a unified customer record and a full picture of the value of each customer. Um, so I want to commend you on that. Is there any any thoughts about your positioning to be open and to allow integration more freely than say is common in automotive retail? Yeah, you know, I mean, we have absolutely made the commitment to our dealers um, that we will be open and agnostic. And that is a commitment that you are seeing through and through. I mean, obviously Fortels was was a big way that we could bring that and and um have a have a channel in which we bring that into into for our dealer partners to connect them. Hey, you know, we feel confident in our solutions, but we also understand that um, you know, there are a lot of solutions out there and we don't want to be the roadblock to that because at the end of the day, we're really focused on enabling the dealers to give ultimately that great experience. And so we are continuing, continuing to not only, um, you know, have a open approach in what how we're building and, and delivering our solutions, but also we're continuing to modernize as well. I mean, that is part of our roadmap for this year in Sales Express is, is how do we modernize the desking experience? How are we modernizing the FNI experience? And so that is another way that we are modernizing those APIs. We continue to look at, hey, how are we, how are we um 
extending our technology for our dealers to consume and how can we make that a lot easier? And so that approach for us is one that we are deeply committed to. And, you know, it is a little bit of a differentiator in the market for us, but it is what we are committed to for our dealer partners. It's what we want to be able to, like I said, enable for them to be able to deliver that experience while giving them both the flexibility and and ultimately the choice to run their business um, in the best way they see. Yeah, because I think the future new and and it's tough to talk about the timing of the future, but I see a time where as more dealer groups implement a CDP uh, with direct feeds of transactional activity from Roadster, eLead, the DMS, uh, feeding into a central database where other things are being updated like phone calls and texts and chats and website visits and how people respond to ads, right? It, it would seem with your robust API structure in the future, there could be scenarios where um, in the call center when a, or the BDC, when a lead comes in, you're able to do a data dip into the dealer group CDP to get that lifetime value score or to get uh, a next appropriate action uh, mm. recommendation uh, because the CDP is seeing all channels, all communications. And you know that doesn't happen unless you have a proven API. Other technology companies in the marketplace are just working on APIs. I think that gives you a competitive edge. So I just want to encourage you, you know, as you talk with your dealer groups, I think the first technology players in the modern retailing space that have some bi-directional hooks into uh, some of the world-class CDPs are going to be a winner because of the extent, extension of new revenue opportunities, new customer ex mm. experiences, new communication. I think that would be an exciting story to cover in the years ahead. Yeah, agreed, Brian. I mean, I, I know our team's been um, talking to some of the things you just said. I was like, oh yeah, we <laughs> we're talking about that as well. So we are... I think there's a lot of exciting potential in, in in the future here, which it will be enabled pretty quickly. So um, we're going to continue to do what we can to help streamline, streamline the processes for the dealers and do it in a way that remains open for, for that dealer choice and flexibility. Well, that's great. You know, and Nua, I'm really glad to have choice to, uh, you know, have you on to talk about this modern retailing. We could have talked about many things, but you know, I think now that inventory levels are coming back up, competition increasing, uh, incentives coming back, uh, it's kind of getting back to competitive environment. Cars aren't selling themselves. And now dealers are going to have to say, how am I going to differentiate my dealership from someone else? And now the stakes have been raised. It's great to know that they have a full suite of solutions available and that Sales Express now with a single login across your core products makes the operational aspects of creating a differentiated customer experience easier. And that's exciting. And I want to give that feedback, you know, to you to take back to the team. Dealers are watching. They're looking for uh, better integration, better connectivity. And I love the vision of um, a single workflow across the enterprise. Yeah, you know, and I would I would just in, keep encouraging dealers to evaluate their process and solutions. We talked a lot about that today, but to me, that is, um, you know, are they are you delivering the kind of experience that your customers want? You know, and understanding where those friction points are that are causing delays um, with that wait time in sales and BDC and F and I in in all the areas. Don't just stop on the the online portion, as we talked about. You know. How are you able to empower your team, your sales, but also again your F and I, other you know your other team folks in that customer journey? How are you empowering them in order to complete the deals faster? You know, remove those delays and really just um, understanding those those fr frustration points that they can work to alleviate so they can get those customers through the store faster um, in, in, and to be able to deliver that experience. And that is exactly what our team is hyper-focused on being able to provide that experience in Sales Express that can streamline that to, to the dealership. But I think it first starts with an understanding of what are those 
you know, processes and, 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 and really evaluate again, technology as well. You know, how are we helping in delivering that kind of a streamlined experience? Well, I think that's uh, great news for the dealers who uh, are looking to modernize their operations to be more efficient, lower their labor costs, increase their customer experience, increase their net promoter score, all the things we talked about today to remain competitive for the, well, unknown storms that are always ahead as the economy shifts into more normal retail operations and maybe faces some economic headwinds. You know, this is an important conversation and you should know that at the upcoming Digital Marketing Strategies Conference or DMSC, uh, May 21st, 22nd, 23rd in Austin, Texas, the team for CDK will be there and ready to talk to dealers about their vision for retailing and how to match up great technology, process coaching and consultants to achieve that competitive edge. We're going to be talking about first party data management, data activation, marketing automation, modern sales process, technology, the use of AI in the sales process. Man, there's so many great conversations that will be had. This is not basic 101 conference. This is the conference to come out to, to really push your managers to stay ahead of the curve and to meet face-to-face with the decision makers that are generating the next generation of software and technology and, well, creators of a modern retail vision. So if you haven't registered, go to digitalmarketingstrategies.org Org, use the code FOMO200. That's F O M O 200. Uh, fear of missing out. It's easy to remember. FOMO200. Don't miss out. Save $200 on your tickets to DMSC. And uh, a new for all the dealers that are listening who are leaning in and wanting to hear how CDK can help them create a modern retailing experience. What is one thing? that you would like to leave on their minds to kind of align your vision and the needs that they have right now in the marketplace? I think one of the biggest, easiest ways they can help move that ball is, is use your use your DR tool, use your digital re- retail tool all the way through the sales journey, not just the lead capture. You know, the proof is in the results we're seeing, as I mentioned, you know, the productivity per salesperson is higher for dealers using digital retailing in the showroom versus the average, and that's per NADA, you know, 16 units per month versus that 10.8. So that's just a quick way. And I would just, again, encourage them to continue to focus on on those areas that move the shopper through the process faster um, while keeping, you know, while ensuring that they have that trust and transparency that we talked about so that they have everything that they need and are confident in their purchase. Those are really great to really good ways that the dealers can focus on their efforts to um, provide that ultimate, you know, improvement in customer experience. Well, I'm going to say amen to that. And for those of you who are listening, if you love this conversation, you should know there's dozens of interviews with industry leaders, companies focused on improving modern retailing, using data as a differentiator to create a better customer experience. So just search for the Brian Pash podcast on the Apple podcast channel, Google Play Store, or SoundCloud, or just simply go to brianpash.libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com and listen to these great interviews. This interview was part of our series leading up to DMSC. So you get to know the speakers, the influencers, the market makers that will be involved in this year's DMSC show in Austin, Texas. And keep in mind, we added a fourth day to the show, a special day dedicated to GA4 training, optimization, and inspection. So if you don't know if your dealership is ready for the cutoff of Google Analytics 3 data on July 1st, and that you're not sure how to use GA4 will get your team registered. It's only $95 extra when you purchase your DMSC ticket. And I want to thank Anu and the entire team at CDK for just creating amazing products over the years. And well, later focused on helping dealers create a modern retailing experience. And for the dealers who tuned in and the industry leaders who are listening, 
I look forward to sharing another conversation with you in the future on another podcast interview. Have a great day and thanks for listening in.